Buenos días a todos. Bienvenidos a este programa de la presentación de este Austria, donde yo estoy con el único astronauta y el primer astronauta de Austria, el señor ingeniero Franz Fieberg. El señor Franz Fieberg fue hace 29 años el astronauta que estuvo en la estación espacial Mir. Después nos va a comentar un poco más acerca de eso. Además, le quiero um, saludar al presidente de la Agencia Espacial, el, el ministro coronel uh, Yelman, Ludovino, Ludovino Yelman, disculpe. Después al director general Alejandro uh, Román, bienvenidos. También a la doctora Hebe Romero, director general de Asuntos de Derecho y Asuntos Internacionales, al, al doctor Jorge Curita, también que es del, del equipo director general, y después también creo que está también Luis, que es el, el jefe de comunicaciones. Bienvenidos acá, acá tenemos en el momento mediodía, hay de una diferencia de seis horas. Bienvenidos a todos. Quiero comenzar de que a lo mejor ustedes van a, van a hablar, nos van a saludar y después, después seguimos con la entrevista. Por favor. Señor presidente. Sí, muy buenos días, señor Franz Fibo, astronauta austriaco. Gracias por su cooperación. Saludos cordiales de la Agencia Espacial del Paraguay. Para nosotros un gusto, una satisfacción muy especial contar con su concurso puedes escuchar a, una, a un astronauta, a una autoridad científica, es lo más importante para una institución, una organización que va buscando el fortalecimiento en temas espaciales. Muchas gracias por tu cooperación y estaremos este, en contacto eh, durante el programa. ¿Eve? Sí, buenos días. Bueno, muchas gracias, bienvenidos. Mr. Franz Fibok, ingeniero Hassler y a todo el equipo de la Agencia Espacial. Ingeniero Curita. Hello, um, thank you very much for spending your time with us. We are very honored and I'm pretty sure the youth in Paraguay will be very excited to hear about you and your, your talk, especially your talk. Thank you. Enrique. Tu microphone, Enrique. Tu microphone, Enrique. Eh, Enrique, tu microphone, nos estamos copiando. Buen día, ¿me escuchan ahora? Sí. Sí. Un saludo especial desde Paraguay. Para mí es un honor estar aquí escuchándole al astronauta y un saludo al ingeniero Hassler. Gracias, gracias. Bueno, well, Herr Figo, es un honor to have you here. Like everybody says, uh, we are very happy and, and honored uh, to hear you. And we are sure this will be, will inspire all our, our young generations and, and, and also all, all the people that is working in the space sector that is new here in Paraguay. Thank you for your time. Pasamos de vuelta al Dr. Hasler para la entrevista. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Yo voy a hacer las preguntas. Las leo, yo voy a decir en ambos idiomas y en inglés, si me permiten. Um, um, how do you do? We have today the interview about your life, your life in space, your life as an astronaut, and maybe you can tell us how it was, how you, how was the beginning of your, of your, your dedication to the space, about your studies, about your life. Maybe you can tell us something about everything of this. Ok, well, bienvenidos a todos. Ya hablo solamente un poquito de español, por eso es mejor que ya hablan en inglés. Uh, welcome to all of you, especially to the kids of Paraguay, because I believe the kids are most important for a country. And it's a very good step of, 
of your government and, and politicians to step into space uh, because this is an inspiring field where young people can uh, really do a lot. So the question is, how did I become an astronaut? How do you become an astronaut? Becoming an astronaut starts very early in life, actually, when you are in kindergarten or in primary school already. For me, it is important to have dreams and in life to follow your dreams. This is important for everyone, not only for astronauts. So make sure you have dreams and follow your dreams. And then, you know, your parents and teachers tell you to be a good student. And there is certainly about it. Uh huh. What's what is it? Das ist eine Unterbrechung gewesen. Ist okay. See? Can you hear? Can you see us? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so it's good to be a good student, uh, but it's also good to be a little naughty from time to time. And being a good student means also that you study a lot, but you do also uh, uh, good in sports and you try to be a healthy person. And a healthy person uh, needs to do sports and also has to make sure that you eat healthy and properly. So this is, this is an important thing. And then, um, you know, when you go through school and then you go to university, uh, you develop your interests. And when you are interested in space, there are several uh, fields uh, which are connected to space and space research. And this goes from physics to chemistry to biology to biotechnology to medicine to uh, geology. Um, so there is there is many different scientific fields uh, where you can uh, go into and uh, develop your interests. And then um, what is necessary is uh, when you live in a small country like in Austria or like in Paraguay, uh, because uh, we do not have our own rockets and our own space program, uh, Austria is part of the European Space Agency. And here uh, we can apply uh, to become astronauts or cosmonauts. Uh, in my case, uh, there was a, a program, a joint program between uh, Russia, or at that time Soviet Union, and Austria, and uh, an Austrian cosmonaut got the opportunity to fly into space, to the space station Mir, and to perform scientific experiments. So there was an election in Austria, there were, you know, uh, there was announcement in newspapers and in radio and on TV that uh, they are looking for candidates to uh, who want to fly to, to the space station Mir. And many people applied, and so did I. Uh, and I was at that time uh, at the University of Technology in Vienna, working as an assistant professor, actually at the very same uh, institute as Professor Hassler uh, also was uh, graduating. And then, uh, you know, you go through a selection and the selection process, uh, of course, is, is very hard. Uh, and and uh, I was, at the end, lucky, together with my backup, Clemens Lothaler, who is a medical doctor. Um, and we were selected to go to Russia for two years for a training. And, uh, and uh, that's how it happened that I became an astronaut. and. Uh, uh, prepared for my mission, which was then eventually in October of 91. It was 29 years ago. So you started with your studies and you was elected. And how was it? Uh, you was the only one. They selected you and not your colleague because they had only one, uh, one place um, to uh, to get into the, was it a Soyuz capsular or was the right. name? Right. 
Um, well, it was a mission for one uh, Austrian to fly. And of course, uh, you always have in a situation like this a backup option. And therefore, there were two of us and uh, we were training together. We did everything uh, the same together. And about six months prior to my flight, uh, the number one candidate was selected. And I was lucky that um, there was a commission and they selected me as being the one who flies. But the number two always needs to be there as a backup. And uh, yes, we were, we were training and preparing to fly uh, uh, a Soyuz, on a Soyuz rocket in a Soyuz uh, spacecraft. And we were eventually flying to the space station Mir. And um, so this was after two years of training. Training was very hard because uh, first of all, it was in Russia. So it was all in Russian. We had to learn the Russian language perfectly. And then all the lectures, everything was in Russian. And you had to know how a rocket uh, is built up. You had to know how the space station is built up. You had to know the spacecraft. You had to know how to, how to handle all these various systems on board. Uh, there was you know, communication systems. There was life support systems because you are in space. And space is an environment where humans cannot live. You have to be within a uh, closed environment with atmosphere. Um, so there was a lot to learn apart from the language. There was a lot of technical things to learn and a lot of practical trainings. Because when you live in space, you are exposed to, to zero G, to weightlessness. And this is a very different way of living than here on the ground. So many, many things to learn, and this is why it's important uh, always to study hard and learn a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, I will translate it in Spanish, some few words. Uh, lo, lo estoy haciendo de que él nos contó cómo uno se, se vuelve astronauta y de que siempre hay que, hay que enseñarle a por lo menos dos. Uno tiene que tener lo que se llama un backup, un segundo, y a, a él le seleccionaron. Él estuvo dos años haciendo eso. Anteriormente él hizo los estudios en la Universidad Tecnológica de, de Viena, era en el mismo instituto donde yo también trabajaba en ese tiempo, y después le seleccionaron a él. Le, ahora le, le, le quiero hacer la pregunta, ¿cómo se sintió, cómo fue, fue eh, su sensación en el, en el espacio? Now I want to ask you, uh, how was your sensation being in space? Uh, well, being in space is, is a unique experience. Uh, you're you're uh, exposed, as I mentioned before, to zero G, zero gravity, so you are weightless. Uh, and, and this is, of course, a wonderful feeling. Um, when you are in space, you are launching on a rocket. Uh, that means uh, you are uh, in less than nine minutes. Uh, accelerated to a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. And then in, with this speed, you are traveling around the Earth. You are in, the, in an orbit, as they say, with 28,000 kilometers per hour. And that's about uh, uh, 90 minutes for one once around the Earth. So it goes very, very fast. So when you are flying in space and then you look um, to, to the Earth, uh, it's fascinating what you can see because you see uh, a lot of things and, 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 and the huge area. Uh, this is a tremendous uh, feeling. And then uh, when you look out into outer space, you see the deep, deep, dark, dark space, the black space, which is also a very impressive view which you are enjoying. Thank you very much. Así que dijo lo que, cómo se ve desde el espacio, la tierra y el, y el mismo espacio que es algo, que es algo muy negro. Um, you have said, como nos dijo, tenemos unas condiciones intelectuales y físicas que uno tiene que cumplir. Uh, 
y la, la educación necesaria ya es de, de tener educación uh, en forma así como un ingeniero o como su colega que era médico. Uh, your colleague was medical, you was, uh, you was an engineer, and you said this, the language that you used was Russian. But I heard about it that the American capsule, there's English, and the others are Russian. And now the new uh, ISS, there are uh, Americans and other, and other people from Russia and other countries. What kind of language? they use? Well, um, in my time it was uh, a pure Soviet mission and uh, so it was Russian. And um, uh, nowadays it's the International Space Station uh, where of course you have people from Europe, you have people from Japan, you have people from Canada, from the United States, from Russia. And uh, the way it's handled is that, uh, you know, you speak both actually, you speak Russian and you speak English. Uh, and that's the good thing because you have American astronauts training in Europe or especially in Russia uh, for a lot of time uh, and, and they go to Japan and, and you have Japanese going to, to the US, to Europe and Russia and you have Russians going to live in America and train in America. So uh, they both speak actually Russian and English uh, and um, uh, that's, I think, a good way because uh, language is a very important thing to get to know, especially the other people and culture. Thank you very much. Now, you, how long you was in space? I was in space from October 2nd through October 10, so eight days. And after the eight days, what happened with your feeling when you, you authorized, when you came back? To, to the Earth, what was the first um, thinking of you being back? Well, when you fly in space and you're exposed to, to zero G or weightlessness, uh, means that uh, you do not need any muscles uh, to move around. So when you move, you just push yourself very lightly from one wall and you're floating to the next wall. By not using your muscles, the muscles become weak very fast. And uh, uh, so this is a big issue, especially when you are in space for a long period of time. And therefore, you have to, to exercise uh, every day up to an hour and a half or two hours in space to keep your muscles uh, in a good condition and to stay physically fit. So this is very important. Because of this uh, zero G, your vestibular system is, uh, is uh, let's say, uh, deteriorated. You do not have a feeling anymore where it's up and down. And in some cases, this is causing an, a, a sickness uh, with the people and, and then they have to throw up and vomit. So this is not a very pleasant feeling. Um, uh, and, and another issue is uh, because uh, under zero G, all your blood and blo body fluid is not being pulled down to your legs, like here on the ground, but it's shifted up to your head. So your head is becoming big and you, be you get these buffy faces. And um, in my case, this was uh, causing headache. I had uh, uh, three, four days uh, headache because uh, all this body fluid was shifting up to my head. So this is, this is uh, 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 you know, this was quite, a, quite an inconvenience. Of course, you can take some medication against it and after three, four days, uh, it was then gone. So when you come back then on the ground and you have not uh, exercised enough, you feel this uh, every step what you do on the ground. You are very weak. Uh, the first hours, uh, your vestibular system is still uh, deteriorated. You have a hard time to walk on a straight line. Uh, you have to watch that you're not tipping over. So it takes quite some hours uh, 
to, to live under earth conditions to be able to kind of normally walk again. Thank you. Fue lo que dijo de que es, hay que recuperarse, se tiene que hacer muchos ejercicios físicos y las primeras horas o hasta los primeros días uno se siente un poco mareado. Eso, eso es una de las cosas importantes. Um, ahora le pregunto si le afectó eso a toda su vida ahora después de 29 años. Um, Did it affect your life after being in space? Well, uh, of course, my life has changed uh, quite dramatically after I came back uh, from this mission. Because before I was an assistant professor at the University of Technology and, uh, you know, no one, no one knew about me. And then I came back and I was uh, a celebrity. Uh, I was, uh, you know, from going to presidents and then having receptions here and there. And uh, also uh, my professional career changed. Um, I, I uh, got them into the space business. Um, first of all, I was still, still under contract of the Austrian government for two years uh, for the scientific work to give lectures on our mission. And then uh, I, I received an offer from an American company Uh, Rockwell and later on from Boeing and I moved over to the United States and then I worked for Rockwell and then Boeing uh, in the space arena and that was a very exciting time because it was uh, after the fall of the Iron Curtain when the two superpowers United States and Russia started to work together and space technology was the first uh, field where they were We're working together and it was a uh, uh, very interesting project. Uh, some of you might remember when the space shuttle was then flying to the space station Mir. And this was a project where you would have two flying objects in space, uh, which were never designed and built to dock to each other. And engineers here on the ground were thinking on what we need to do to dock the space shuttle Uh, to the space station Mir, and this was a tremendous, exciting uh, uh, project, and I was happy and lucky to be in the middle of that. Thank you very much. Tiene alguna persona de ustedes ahora algunas preguntas especiales para el astronauta? If somebody of them have a question. Uh, yes, uh, muchas gracias, Walter. Jorge, no sé si quieres dar, hacer una pregunta. Okay, it's a, it's a really quick question. Uh, I think everybody might already ask you many times. Do you still, or you, you know, after your journey in space, do you dream about weightlessness? Do you still <laughs> after so many years? Well, actually, yes. Uh, I had several um, occasions, of course, close to my flight when I still was dreaming about weightlessness. And particular, I remember um, because I, I turn quite often when I sleep. And of course, when you sleep in, in, in zero G, uh, you know, you don't have a pillow, your head doesn't weigh anything. So it's easy to turn around. And being back on Earth, I remember the first nights uh, I was kind of, you know, mad why is my head so heavy when turning around so this was this was uh, annoying me and then still later on i remember there were quite a number of times when i was dreaming of being in, in weightlessness conditions thank you Some, somebody else okay the other uh, Eve, enrique No te escucho, eh. estás con el micrófono apagado. Sí. Hola, ¿me escuchan? Sí. Ahora sí. Una, una pregunta para el astronauta, de si soñaba con ser astronauta desde chico. ¿Podés repetir? Porque no te entendí por tu tapabocas. Si soñaba con ser astronauta desde pequeño. Sí. Um, Um, the obstruction said Klein immer geglaubt hast, Astronaut zu sein. Uh, well, 
Actually, yes, but I was not, you know, I had the dream because I was lucky I could uh, life experience the first uh, landing on the moon. I mean, life on TV. I was um, nine years old when, when that happened and I was seeing the landing on the moon and, and this was, of course, exciting for, for me as well as many other hundreds, millions of girls and boys and men and women on this planet. Uh, who wanted to to be an astronaut, and so it, I was also uh, uh, wanting to become an astronaut. But uh, like in Paraguay, in Austria, we are a small country, and we were not uh, the superpowers who were big time in the space business. So this was this was uh, a far away dream and not very realistic. And then out of a sudden, an opportunity came along when um, the Soviet Union was inviting Austria for a joint space mission. And, um, you know, here I, I, I was and, and like life is always offering many good and nice and exciting opportunities. So I decided to apply for it and go for it. Perfect. Es la contestación. La contestación era, era así lo que preguntaste. Sí, sí. Sí, muchas gracias. Thank you. Alejandro. Uh, Enrique, si ¿sí tenés alguna pregunta. Y quisiera saber el, eh, el, si en el, en el país se le considera un héroe porque en muchos lugares a los astronautas se le considera un héroe nacional. <risa> Bueno, lo traduzco en alemán porque me va a ser más fácil. Um, ob du jetzt wieder zurückgekommen bist, ein Held gewesen bist, ob du ein Nationalheld gewesen bist, weil in vielen Ländern ist das so. Das ist eine Kulturfrage. Uh, yes, more, more yes than no, but, but uh, it's not so that, uh, you know, I was, I was flying with, with uh, the first Kazakh, so the first Kazakh from Kazakhstan, and he was he was received after the flight like a god. So certainly in Austria this was not the case. Uh, I was uh, you know a celebrity and 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 uh, this is very nice and and I enjoyed it and people like me and and they recognize me when I'm on the street. But I'm not treated or handled like a god. I'm I'm. Luckily, a normal person here, and and uh, uh, since I'm still the, the the only one, the first and only one, um, so I'm still you know in the in the public view when anything is happening related to space. Lo entendí. Yo voy a traducir para los chicos, los que a lo mejor van a van a saber eso pasa desde que él estaba junto con el primer astronauta de Kazajstán. A él sí le recibieron como héroe, casi como un dios. Y acá en Austria se le recibió con mucho recon reconocimiento, con mucho reconocimiento, pero no como héroe, sino de que hoy en día tiene ese reconocimiento de ser un especialista sobre el espacio. Ok, este, yeah, ok, eh, I can... I, uh, Sí, quería hacer una pregunta, presidente. ¿Usted quiere hacer una pregunta? Sí, señor. No le estoy viendo, solo le escucho. Adelante. Adelante, presidente. Ok, señor astronauta, Fran, eh, por favor, si usted me podría sugerir algunas recomendaciones en base a su experiencia, eh, ¿cómo la Agencia Espacial del Paraguay, qué estrategia podríamos utilizar para motivar eh, a los niños, a los jóvenes, a la Hacia la ciencia, que es lo fundamental. Uh, lo traduzco en alemán. ¿Qué es lo que la regierung vorschlagen? ¿Qué es lo que la regierung die Jugend am besten motivieren? Wie kann man, wie kann man, uh, was, was würden Sie sagen, dass, dass, dass er machen sollte? Als, als Leiter der Agentur? Uh, well, this is a good and difficult question. Uh, but what my, my experience is that uh, 
young people uh, can be most uh, fascinated by uh, by uh, how they say by astronauts by real human livings who were in space and when they tell about their experiences and what they are doing and they have done in space uh, of course in Austria we are lucky because now I was the one who flew in space but I, I think uh, if you just invite uh, astronauts to come to your country and and make with them a tour uh, through the country and, and, and have them give lectures and tell about their experiences in space. This is tremendously inspiring for young people because they, they hear the voice, they, they feel the emotions, they see the pictures. And for us in Austria, um, I think this is a very good way also, and for you the same, to get to young people also into the fields of science, of technology, uh, which is the future. And, and uh, by inspiring young people with, with space technology, you get to, you get, to get uh, young people to get into science, into math, into physics, uh, and, and a nation which is dealing with high technology like Austria is doing. It's very important for us to get enough young people uh, to be in the scientific world and technical world. Eh, espero que se entendió, pero en pocas palabras se está diciendo la iniciativa, así como dijo el presidente, de que la iniciativa de, de presentar tecnología, ciencia, todas las cosas relacionadas a, al espacio, a la juventud, es uno de los mejores uh, procedimientos que una agencia pueda hacer. Okay, uh, may I then uh, ask, a, I always wanted to, to ask an astronaut that which one is the most significant moment in, during your flight where you feel, I don't know, the, this overview uh, sensation that everybody says, which one was a, a, a a most significant moment in, in your during your flight to space? Uh, to be honest, there was not one uh, single uh, important moment. There were uh, a couple or several. The first one, which is uh, incredible, is let's say the whole space flight from a technical point of view. So to get into the rocket, the launch, you know, all this power, uh, then flying in space, uh, approaching the space station, docking, everything works automatically, two objects flying very fast in space, then undocking and, and entering the atmosphere and eventually landing. So all this from a technical point of view. Then of course, uh, the, the sensation of floating in space in, in weightlessness conditions. Uh, incredible. And then the third is, uh, let's say, the view out of the, the window. And, and, you know, there's no up and down. So whenever you look out and you want to see Earth, you have to first uh, look for Earth, wherever it is, and then you see it under some uh, certain angle. So the view is incredible from the, our home planet but also from, from outer space. And then I have a, a fourth very personal uh, emotional moment. I was lucky uh, and, and I had a unique uh, experience that on the day, on the very day of my launch, a uh, few hours after launch, my wife who was pregnant had to go to hospital and my daughter was born. And, and that was of course, you know, when I was in space and I received Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Thank Take you over. very much.
¿Se entendió? Espero que lo van a entender. Que yo lo digo, yo lo repito nomás para la gente que está escuchando, de que una de las cosas más importantes para él fue cuando, cuando él, él estuvo en el espacio, um, nació su hija. Y eso es algo, eh, algo muy, uh, muy emocionante. Tenemos, no sé si tenemos más preguntas. I don't know if you have some more questions because the time I have for the yes. interview is not finishing and, 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 and no, no sé cómo están ustedes de tiempo, pero dentro de tenemos que salir. Y una pregunta que hacen los niños siempre es si hoy en su vida cotidiana, ¿qué es lo que extraña de la vida activa del astronauta? ¿Qué extraña? Lo que está extrañando, decís. Lo que puede, sí, hoy en su vida cotidiana, ¿qué extraña de la vida activa del astronauta? Ok, ok. Um, que what is what you most, um, uh, your feeling, what is, uh, was vermisst du am meisten jetzt? Jetzt? Jetzt, ja, okay. nachdem als du Astronaut warst, nachdem du im Raum warst. Well, of course, du? Uh, I'm missing being in space and flying in space because this is a, a unique experience and a unique feeling. And when you're on the ground, and especially when you know that it's not going to happen soon, that you will be up in space, you miss space a lot. Creo que se entendió lo que más le falta es el espacio y le gustaría, lógicamente, pasar otra vez por allí. Pero no es tan fácil. Sí, no. sí muy bien. Enrique, Alejandro. Uh, yes. ¿Quieren hacer un cierre? Eve, presidente. Oh, ¿Puedo tener una pregunta? Es una pregunta rápida. Porque como estamos hablando de cosas que se han perdido, ¿tienes algo que no te arrepientes de no haber hecho en el espacio ahora que estás, you know, looking back? Me gustaría que hubiera hecho esto en el espacio antes de volver a la Tierra. Oh, oh, yeah, of course, you know, that, uh, especially in my case, the time was very limited. And, and uh, there are many things where you think afterwards, oh, I should have spent more time and more focus on that. But, you know, on the other side, you can do only so many things in, in, in eight days. So, so that's what it is. And, and uh, try to suck up as much as possible like a sponge and, and, uh, and, and live with that. Okay. Right. Sí, Thank el you. presidente. Eh, ok. Eh, 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 para. Señor astronauta eh, Frank eh, Fibo, eh, quiero hacerle una consulta de un chico, de un niño paraguayo, el niño Fabián Alcides Miguel Benítez Vázquez. Es un estudiante de siete años. Eh, es, vive en la ciudad de Guanamaré, es un vecinito y se dedica mucho a la ciencia. Eh, tiene un perfil para científico. Eh, su, su terminología, su vivencia, todo es electrónica, física, astronomía. Y me envió una pregunta específica para usted, para un astronauta. Y la pregunta es lo siguiente. ¿Cómo hace el astronauta para dormir en el espacio. Esa es una pregunta eh, que hace el chico eh, de, de una escuela de Guarambaré. Wie man schläft. Ja, wie man schläft. Was macht man ja. zum Schlafen? Ja. Okay. Uh, this is a very important question. Uh, how you sleep in space? Uh, well, you know, you're floating, so you have to make sure that when you go to sleep uh, and, and uh, there are sleeping bags where you sleep. So you put yourself in a sleeping bag and then you have to make sure that you fix the sleeping bags. You can tie them to the wall or to the ceiling. You know, there's no up and down. You can sleep wherever you want, but you make sure you fix yourself because if you do not fix your sleeping bag, you might move and float during the night and then bump your head on the wall. So this is not pleasant. 
Uh, ich werde es jetzt mal ganz übersetzen, yo voy a traducir en pocas palabras, un poco, es como, una, como dormir en una mochila, la, es una mochila alargada que se tiene que fijar en las paredes para no flotar en el espacio. And then, uh, you know, you don't need a pillow because there is no, no uh, weight up there, so everything is weightless. So your head does not fall, you don't need a pillow. No se necesita almohada porque la cabeza no se mueve, pues. Entonces, uno solo está ahí y, y dentro de ese, um, sí, dentro de ese, um, ese cajón, mochila, algo así como se puede decir, y ahí está flotando. Y no necesita almohada, pero sí fijarlo en la pared de la, de la cabina. Uh, and after, you know, People who fly long time in space, they report that they do not sleep very well. Uh, you sleep only a few hours at night. Uh, it's, it's, uh, many people get back pain uh, because of cramps in your back. So it's not such a pleasant thing really to, to sleep in space. No es de nada como cuando estar allí porque uno le duele la espalda, le duelen las cosas porque uno no puede descansar de verdad. Ok, excelente, señor astronauta. Su respuesta es eh, bien didáctico para este chico paraguayo que realmente aparentemente se perfila muy bien porque su vivencia todo es eh, ciencia, todo es astronomía, todo es electrónica. Eh, confirmando su edad de eh, siete años ya realmente eh, da a entender que va, va por buen camino. Muchas gracias, señor astronauta. Saludos cordiales nuevamente de la Agencia Espacial del Paraguay. Un fuerte apretón de mano para usted. Muchísimas gracias, señor presidente, también por darnos la oportunidad de poder tener esta entrevista con ustedes. Fue un gran placer. Thank you very much. Okay, bye bye and thank you. Maybe next time in Paraguay. Perfect. Okay. Thank Ciao. you.